charters, um, which was dreamed up by the, the, the eminent president of the American Federation of Teachers, Albert Shanker, were supposed to be a way to improve public education by innovation and collaboration. And she, now there are more than 5,000 charters with over one and a half million students, which is about three, three and a half percent of our nation's public school students. And there are excellent charter schools. I've seen excellent charter schools. There are also absolutely dreadful charter schools. If you look at the charter school sector as a whole, there's no difference when they're compared to regular public schools, at least by test scores, which is the only measure we have right now. Some charter schools are run by very responsible organizations. Some are run by entrepreneurs who see an opportunity to make money. Some are run by total incompetents who shouldn't get any public money or be in charge of children. <laughs> some, some charter schools get high test scores by skimming and excluding special education students. And there are lawsuits all over the country against charter schools that have kicked out or excluded special education students. The most definitive national study that we have of charters was done at Stanford University uh, by uh, Margaret Raymond, who's associated with the Hoover Institution, funded by the Walton Foundation, the most conservative foundation in the country. It's called the Credo Study. The Credo Study, looking at half the charter schools in the nation, found that 17% of them got higher test scores than a matched traditional public school. 17%, that's about one out of six. It found that 37% got worse test scores than a matched public school. And among the remaining 46%, the scores were no different. So in 83% of the cases, the scores were no different between or worse as, um, when comparing charters and regular public schools. It was a study posted on the website of the U.S. Department of Education looking at charter middle schools by mathematical policy research that found that comparing middle school students and charter schools and regular public schools, there was no difference either in test scores or behavior. Rand Corporation did a study of charters in eight states and found no difference between regular public schools and charter schools. On the native charters that had been compared to regular public schools in 2003, five, seven, and nine, again, there's very little, if any, difference between the performance of black students, Hispanic students, urban students, or low-income students, whether they're in charters or public schools. Uh, the latest enthusiasm coming from the hard right is the revival of the voucher idea. Uh, when I wrote my book, I guess I thought that the voucher idea had died, but it's back. <laughs> State of Indiana just passed a statewide voucher program. Uh, in Wisconsin, Governor Walker proposed and got adopted an expansion of the voucher program. Uh, and there are other states like Pennsylvania now considering vouchers. Uh, voucher advocates used to say that if there were vouchers, there would be miraculous improvement and educational achievement. Um, Chubb and Mo, in their famous book about vouchers, said that choice is itself a panacea. Need markets, not politics. But we have evidence now, and the strongest evidence comes from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where there has been a voucher program now for 21 years. 21 years seems like a fair enough period of time to test something out, right? Um, now, at Milwaukee, uh, there have been a number of studies at the Milwaukee voucher program, but Milwaukee, for the first time in 2009, decided to participate in the Urban NAEP, that's the National Assessment. And there are about 20 cities that participate in Urban Aid. So Milwaukee is participated, and what we learned about Milwaukee is that the public school students in Milwaukee have among the lowest test scores in the nation. And if you remember, the theory of vouchers in Milwaukee was that it would create a rising tide of competition between charters, vouchers, and the regular public schools would cause everyone's achievement to improve as they competed for students. But the public schools have very low performance in Milwaukee. In fact, the scores and for Milwaukee students are no better than those of uh, black students in Milwaukee public schools are no better than those of black students in Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, and Louisiana. That's pretty pathetic. I mean, it really shows that Bowers had no beneficial impact for the regular public schools. But in 2011, just this past spring, the state test scores came out for Milwaukee, and what we learned then was that there was no difference between the public schools, which are doing terribly, and the voucher schools. And no difference between the charter schools. They're all doing badly. We have three sectors in competition for students. 
and the whole focus is on competition, and there's been no improvement for anyone. There is no rising tide and no boats were lifted. So now the voucher advocates are saying very little about academic improvement. What they're saying is you can save money <laughs> because they don't have the evidence for academic improvement. 